Hi guys, how are you doing? It's your boy, the partner. Now, um, let's work on the courses. And uh, first of all, before we work, I want to change this back to categories so that it will be easy for us to know where we are at any point in time. So to do that, we need us to go to layout and then we go to categories. So we'll go to layout folders, we we'll go to menu and then we change that to categories. Uh, we can change it later just for semantic purpose we can change it later to better reflect what we want but for now instead of all courses i want to call it what it is which is uh it is actually categories or co um course categories depending on how you want to course categories okay so right back here we'll see that now um the courses the fields we created for courses are not enough so um I think we should uh, take our time and create um, much better information because somebody that will try to take a course needs more information, all right? So we want to like more, better structure the information. So we're going to re, re, um, recreate that courses table. So we'll go to database, go to migrations, and we're looking for courses. All right, we'll find courses here. I'll drag this right back. As you can see, we tried with a number of things, but not all. Right. Um, the first thing we need to work on is um, the tags. Oh, what is this? I've duplicated this line, so I'm going to call this tags. All right. And um, we could do tags like see tags as topics. Like um, tag one tag could be PHP, another one will be Laravel. So if we're making a Laravel course, I will tag PHP. Tag, La tag Laravel, tag what else again, HTML, CSS, you know. So I'm just going to make it nullable. For now, but I'm going to put somewhere here, PHP, Laravel, and so on. All right. So people can, uh, so anytime I check this, I can know what tags mean. Then another thing we have to look at is, um, I think I should drag tags to uh, maybe the bottom. Then drag photos to the top. See, the arrangement doesn't really matter. I just want when the HTML is being built, that it is built properly. All right. Okay, so um, we need the URL to the promo video. All right. So we can do promo video. URL and that is not level two. So no level, no level. So you know what that means. Uh, when people are looking at the course, they want to check whether they want to. When they are looking at the course page, they want to check whether they want to buy the course or not. There's a video that summarizes what the course is all about. That's what promo video URL is. Okay, we want the, um, the creator of the course to put the URL so we'll automatically display the video for the uh, aspiring uh, customers or students. All right, the next thing we're going to be looking at is um, uh, what will students learn in this course? So um, I think I should call it, so we need a long text under this description of the course. We can say what will students learn, what will students learn all right that's one field so we will yeah what will students learn um, remember it can be knowledgeable okay now the next thing we're going to look at is um, are there any cost requirements or prerequisites so I can say prerequisites Requisites or cost requirements. Requirements. Okay, so requirements. And then finally, we're going to look at who are the target students. Requirements will be a uh, long text. And target students will be long text too. So we have that. Target students. Beautiful. I think with this, we have covered um, the main things I was concerned about that we didn't have initially. I think um, that pretty 
that basically sorts it out. The only other thing we can have is subtitle control. Subtitle. Now we need to arrange this properly because when it is building the HTML, this HTML wanted to build it in the order we want instead of us going to manually rebuild it again. Alright. So I want the main information appearing first. Alright. So title okay um, usually we want the person to enter the name of the course oh, okay I think this should be up here too okay beautiful we want this person to enter the title of the course and if there is any subtitle and it should be nullable you know what is subtitle uh, there is a main title then there is a, a small better description of it all right so now we have um enter the main title and if there's any subtitle enter it then enter a description for the course and then if there's a promo video url enter that enter the photo i think the photo should come before the promo video all right upload a picture then give us more details uh, what will the students learn and um, I think um, I'll put this under target your students eventually on my right code I'll separate these settings into different pages so it will be easy for the um, the owner to do about instructor now level okay so we need to know about the instructor straight up in the description. Um, do we really need a description or should we just call it what will students learn? I think, I'm not sure though, but it's possible. Okay, so cool. Then um, these are the uploads. You need to upload a photo and um, a promo video to target students requirements this okay this one has to do with price and coupons we didn't build any we need an extra table to be able to start adding coupons but for now we're gonna leave this like this all right um there's a price to it there's the actual price there this uh, this is discount price okay playlist url okay this is actually the actual content of the course view count okay i think i should take the playlist url up there like I said, just know that this arrangement is not um, must not happen. Okay, you mustn't do that. But I'm just trying to make sure that my code appears well, and it will save me more time. Subscriber count status. All right, live, not live. Okay, tag. Beautiful. So I think it's better arranged now. The tags should be up there. Tag. So as you're creating the course. You are selecting the category and you're adding the tax. Okay, so create course. Target your students and price and coupons and statistics. I'll call it stats. Okay, um I think the status should be up there. After creating the course, we should be able to know when it's live. Okay, I think we should have another one, admin status. So for a course to be live, uh, the, the creator has to, I think I should put the creator status. Okay, the creator of the course should have to set it live then admin will review this course and admin will set it live so for a course to be live the two of them must be live all right if at least one of them is not live then this course will not be visible on the platform except to the admin and to the creator all right this makes sense now now as usual we're going to run our we're going to run our beautiful um PHP artisan stuff. 
no not really php artisan uh, migrate so it will run all the migrate i should have done migrate fresh this will throw an error i should have done migrate column fresh nothing to migrate you see uh, if we do this uh, fresh remember that if fresh doesn't work on your own you do refresh okay we're done with migration now remember that this means that our database is wiped clean now we need to create a fresh user account all right so but this sorts our problem now we have to go and use um our laravel generator to reconstruct the html for this so we use this place um i think here we just press up arrow and instead of users we're going to do um categories is it categories courses courses instead of user we're going to do course So because this is a tutorial and uh, people might be wondering how do we do coupons well what is the idea behind uh, creating coupons I will just create the coupons table I may not cover it in this uh, course but I will show you what the coupons table will look like and how it relates to the courses table then you can decide um, whether to um, implement it because implementation is now easy all right so once this is done we'll create coupons so very smartly we'll do php artisan make migrate migration create underscore coupons table hit enter and that table is created okay so if we go to migrations database migrations we will see coupons create coupons table and then in coupons table the first thing we want to look at is we need to know who is creating this coupon so table uh, integer user ID yeah we need to know that you are creating this coupon all right okay so we need to know other things such as which cost is this coupon being created for assuming it is being created for a course we need to know what if it is being created for a category category all right what if it's created for a user account um user account what i mean is somebody an instructor can decide to create a special coupon for all his courses if he gives you this coupon you're gonna get all his courses for ten dollars instead of hundred dollars you get what i'm saying so with this coupon any of his courses you want to buy is going to be at this exact same price okay so that's what i mean by that so of course all of them um, can be nullable so we have make them nullable nullable Nullable. So the pens, uh, the person can choose the one they want. All right. Um, we're gonna know the type of coupon this is. Is it a coupon that will make the courses free? We'll call it um, string. Uh, we'll call it type coupon type. So by default, it should be free. All right. So at the same time, it cannot be nullable. Okay, the other options are free and uh, discounted price. Discount. So the, the coupon can be free or providing the cost at a discounted price. You understand? So we need to know. 
we also need to know what is the if it is discounted price then what is the price we we'll say table uh, double what is the price we can say price coupon price price eight two or ten two will do depending on what you want so but um, the default, in case people didn't feel this, the default should be, I don't know, no need for default. I don't think there's any need for default. So we need to know status. Um, is this still on? Table. Um, integer status, status, status. I think status. Status. Status default should be on. Right, put on. Off. Okay, so this is what I mean. The status, when a coupon is created, is if it's on, then it's active, right? Now, if it is active, then it works. People use it. But if it is off, it is gone. It's dead. All right. Now, we need to know the deadline of this coupon. When is this coupon code ending? We'll see table. Date time. I think it's this way. I can't remember, but I have to check now. So, we'll call it deadline. So, we need the deadline of this. We we'll have to programmatically add it uh, to one month. The vote should be one month ahead. Or the vote should be infinite. Infinite. The vote should be infinite. So if there is no deadline, if there is no deadline, then this coupon will run forever. All right. Until. This coupon will run until something happens. So we're gonna call it until integer. What is the total number? Total number of coupon coupons. Alright. So we can say remaining. Um total number of coupons available. Available and um, we're going to do the same thing and say remaining. Uh, I think total total available, total coupons available, and total remaining. So default should be zero. No, no default. Should be nullable. So the idea is that I think I should make this nullable though, or not. The idea is that you must always tell us how many coupons you are creating. When you're creating a coupon, you must tell us how many. So let's say I'm creating ten thousand coupons that will, even though the ten thousand has not run out, once it reaches this date, this coupon should be invalid, right? And then the total number remaining. So after that, of that 10,000, let's say 2,500 have used it. We need to be able to tell that, all right? Okay, I think um, everything is making sense now. Is there anything we're missing? I don't think we're missing. Okay, I don't think we're missing anything. So this is what the coupon table uh, uh, looks like. I just want to confirm this date time field. So that's date time as you can see it exists and we're good um, right here you can either use date or date time i'm using date time to know the exact time this coupon will finish all right so uh what one small one uh, nice thing we can do is to uh um add this coupon add a countdown so that if anybody is using this coupon they will know uh, that they should uh, quickly buy this course or uh, on before
before the uh, countdown timer um, ends. All right. So I think we should add a countdown timer and also add visible on course, course page. So deadline. We can do countdown, fake countdown, fake countdown timer. Let's just call it countdown timer. Count. Countdown. Countdown timer. Alright, this countdown timer is optional. So, but it just says that if a user uh, checks out this course, that they should be able, they should see a countdown timer. Sometimes uh, you are checking out a course page, it's promising you this amount. You can get it at this amount if you buy within two hours. All right. Okay. So um, then we can say um, student ID. Student ID. So now th this person or customer from wherever they are showing up from, and um, they show up on our platform, they want to. They are looking at a course. Maybe they came through. Um, this cannot be integer. This has to be string. So let's say they came through a Facebook advert and they clicked on the coupon link and it brings them to the course page. They should see this countdown timer counting. You have two hours to go. So let me put this countdown timer. It's not an actual date. It's just um, hours to go. Hours. Okay. So should it be in date time? I think. I think um, it should be in, in string. So I'm going to put this in uh, float. Float. Float countdown timer. I'll tell you why shortly. There are just. Um, What do I do? Two, let's say three, and then two. I think it's okay this way. Now, what this means, close and double almost do the same thing. What it means is that I want the person to be in, to put hours here. So let's say they want the countdown timer to end in two hours, 30 minutes. They'll put 2.5. Uh, That's two hours, 30 minutes. You get, all right? So, we're good. Now we have to go and uh, run migration. Then we run our PHP artisan. Okay. Um, where are we? We're going to run migration. PHP migrate fresh. And it's going to give us fresh migration. All right. So. One thing I think we forgot is that what if we want this coupon to be available on the course page? Let's say somebody created a course and somebody just discovered that course by mistake. But we want them to also see a coupon directly that um, reduces the price of the course to encourage them to buy. So the creator of the course will have to um, choose whether this coupon will be directly available on course page. So I think we should do that. Table. Um, should be an integer, right? Sign it in. Says available, available on course page. So it's a yes or no answer, but by default, it should be default, it should be no. Zero. Zero means no. Or we could make it a string, I think should be okay it's a string available on course page by default it should be no all right then the other options are no and yes so I want this to be close to where the person is choosing the course ID somewhere here I think 
don't worry here, it's okay. Okay, we're good. So we'll run what we run. Uh, just know that in real in real life, building your Laravel app, you have to uh, run this migration so many times because you're trying to correct tiny little things you missed out. Just tiny little things. You have to run the migration over and over again. So no need to put in data, much data. All right. But I'll still show you down the line how to um, correct any mistakes you made without running migrations. I'll show you down the line. How are you guys doing? It's your boy. Uh, let's go ahead and continue now um, let's quickly run that code to create it the Laravel generator code we're gonna call it coupons plural then here we're gonna do coupon coupon so it's gonna create the coupon table and we good so we good uh, let's see what has been built so far we come here and refresh this will log us out of course because you know we're no longer logged in uh, the database has been changed you see it has thrown us out so click on login don't worry we'll fix all this later but um, this now shows that we know exactly what we're doing so we'll go to register so I've registered and logged in and there we are again now what we're going to start looking at is um, for instance the course category let's check it out and see whether it still has the design we give it um, click add new and then add a new category a new category is e-commerce uh, anything works view counts we're going to manually put view counts we'll still work on it click save so you see it still has that design i think we need to remove that view count from the from the edit page so if we go to course categories so the thing with design is that um, this is category field remember that, that the edit and the create pages use the same number of fields look at it the edit page simply imports ca categories folder and the fields file this fields file that's what is imported here if you go to the create page it does the same thing so if we want to edit anything uh, that has to do with these two pages, we just have to edit it in one place. And to me, that's a smart thing that the Laravel uh, generator does for us. So we're gonna remove this view count. Like, you don't need to modify it by yourself. Let's try and create this just to be sure that everything goes well. Um, create another one, entertainment. Save. Yeah, it works and there is no view yet this makes sense if i view it now uh there's no view yet but if i refresh it's gonna give me one you see it's very beautiful all right now look at how courses are listed it's so jam-packed now we're gonna go to courses and actually start working if i click on courses now i see that uh you see it has a lot now all we just need in courses is just a name Maybe if there is a picture we could display it. Otherwise, we just need the title of the course and how much the course goes for. Then a little description. There is nothing else we need in the course. And in future, uh, you might add rating. You understand? The general rating and review of people. But basically, that's just what we need. All these other URLs, all these other um, options will be in the other field. So let's go to where we're going to see this page. There's the courses index. So we'll go to courses folder and then we're dealing with the index but when we click on index you see that this is the index page but it is in importing something called courses table so we're going to go to courses table this is what we're seeing here you see this user id category id that's what we're seeing here user id category id now i want to duplicate this the reason I want to duplicate it is that what normal users see in a course table will be different from what admin sees, all right? So I just want to reserve the original version of it uh, while working on the user copy. So I'll copy this and repaste. Oops. Paste. So you see it has dot one. Cool. So I can click on this and start working. We don't need to know who created user id of who created it no category which category it belongs to i don't think we need to know that so the title is okay the subtitle 
I doubt the description no so the thing is while you're deleting things at the header you should also be deleting it from the content too quickly and at the same time simultaneously otherwise you will forget what you should delete about instructor we don't need it playlist URL oh, we don't need it do we uh, I doubt about instructor and play, playlist URL both of them are gone uh, we don't need tags promo video URL uh, creator status admin status what will students learn both of them are all of them are gone I think actual price discount price uh, view count subscriber count I think these two fields should be gone requirements so do subscriber count actual present requirements target students what will students learn admin status creative status promo video or url so we're removing this five target students total tags should be gone too so we are down to title subtitle and um, I think that kind of makes some solid sense some really good sense now we're gonna have to start redesigning this but let's see what this looks like already so come here reload so that most of this sense will be gone beautiful now it's now uh, stretched out much properly now what we want is the subtitle to be right under the title so the title should be in a tag let's say h2 tag so the title of the course should be a little bold h2 tag h2 all right and then underneath it we have the subtitle the subtitle is just like a better explanation a better longer explanation of what the title is okay just to be sure that it's on that i'll put a dr tag and then here we're going to remove the subtitle now we know that the the photo should be beside the title but let's just see what's happening here first reload okay good i'll put the photo before the title so we have this photo and uh, we have no need to call it photo i'll delete this okay okay so let's create a course first and so that we can see what it looks like then we continue all right we're good so we click on this to create a new course so this is the course page um, let's start working on it right away I think the first thing is the user ID is showing we don't need the user ID to show all right we need to automatically insert it all right to do that we go to the controller and basically what we're looking for is the controller that handles user registration and that here is it so now we are here we're looking for the controller the action method that handles user save this is called store in Laravel. this is the store method this handles the saving of things to the database see basically what it does it receives the item from the form this form we're going to submit here when we click on submit at the bottom say receive the item all the requests saves it here in this variable then goes to the database and saves it you see now what we want to do is to basically let it know what it should do with one of the fields so there's a field that's called the input input field for user id so basically what we're saying is uh auth user basically use the id of the current user whichever user is logged in that's the user you should uh that's what you should set as the user ID for whichever user is logged in. But to use auth, you need to import it, all right? You need to import the namespace. So we're just gonna do say use auth. I hope you understand what we did here. We simply just said uh, after collecting the whole contents of the form, 
add an extra content that you will call user ID and the value you will save there is the value of the currently logged in user. So with that sorted out, we don't need this user ID field. So we're going to just um, remove it. To do that is simple. We have to go and find where it is in resources, views. We're talking about courses and we are looking at fields. Then the first field is user ID. We delete it. We don't need it. It's gone. So if we refresh this page now, we have something that looks a little better. Okay. Our next challenge is the category ID. We need to list all the categories. So to do that, we need to go to the courses table, or courses uh, field for create and list all the categories. So to do that is simple. We need to go. There are many ways to do that, of course. In case as you learn Laravel more, you'll find out other ways. So we'll go to courses controller. I mean app HTTP controllers courses courses controller and um, create store we're looking at create all right so the create page here we're supposed to pull all all the um, co categories categories equal to category um, all I think this will give us all the categories I feel and then we're going to pass it into the view we say with whenever you're displaying the view uh, category category so this is basically what we just did we said go to the categories table get uh, all the categories that are available and display them in the category uh, pass them into this view uh, in the courses folder in resources and the create of labels php pass them so that we can have access to this variable inside there but before you can use category you need to import it too so we're going to do use app models category that's how you import a model so remember that the model is what um, connects to the database so that's um Basically, what we're saying is go to app folder, go to models, and you'll find the categories here. Then list all of them for us and then pass it in. Now, if we come here and refresh, we'll not see anything at all. But what we're going to do next is what will change the world. Okay, now uh, you see nothing changed. So now we're going to have to make this a drop down list very smartly. And um, the way to do that is simple. We just go to where it is resources views and we're gonna look for courses and we're looking for the fields so the fields we're talking about is this category we need to uh, turn this into a drop down list all right so to do that i will go to since i know that this is this platform is running on bootstrap 3 and 4 at the same time i will go and search for form group drop down select drop down Drop down bootstrap 3. Bootstrap 4 will work also in case you don't know. Um, bootstrap 3 form inputs. Alright, so this is showing us W3 schools and we're looking for um, bootstrap 3 select. So it has opened. You see here is select. That's the last thing. So we'll go down and see the select button. Look at it here. So we can copy this. That's this code we need. I'll paste it somewhere. Let's just say I paste it at the top. Control V and uh, give it a width call. Give it a width of um, okay, six. Let's just see what it looks like. So we come back to our code, refresh. We should see it here. All right, you see, nice select drop down. Now that's what we want to use to replace, replace category. So we start working on it. We we'll change it to category. Category. All right. So the next thing we're looking at category is um, the name is category ID. Copy. See category ID. For category ID, select ID. Category ID. 
and um, class. All right. So we have to type, give it a name too, because every form element has a name. So the name is category ID. Now here we're gonna do sm something smart. We remove all the options, but we'll create a for loop. So we can do for each as for each categories as category. If you know PHP, this wouldn't be strange to you. We'll do and for each. So this is now a loop, and what this loop is, it's going to take that variable we created in the controller here this variable that we're passing in here and loop through it depending on how many categories it finds inside it will start printing the categories here so now we can do something that Laravel does quite easily which is this 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 is how you do echo in Laravel you use this then you can now do category category then um, I think it's the other way around category name I think name it's what it is. Uh, one way to find out is to go to database. I just want to find out whether it's name or title that we're working with. Um, I'll go to database, go to category migration, category migration, and it is name. All right, so this is what we're working with name. And we're back, name. So let's go and refresh. If we refresh now, and what we did worked. It's going to print all the available categories, in which case I think we just have only two categories created so far. I'll refresh and um, see, that's already given us. See, beautiful. So awesome. Now, this won't work because there is no value. Every time you have an option in, uh, in this, you should have a value. Alright, so you have um, the value will be the category ID. All right, this makes sense now. Now we're gonna delete this category here. We have deleted. Go and check again. So makes sense to us. Makes sense. I think one thing we can do about these uh, boxes is we can reduce it. So the text areas, so description, let's look for description. Uh, instead of 12, I'll give it an eight. So instead of 12, I'll give this an 8. Any one that has 12. So all of them that have 12, they should be 8. Requirement. It um, should be 8. Alright, no more. Reload. And you see, um, the descriptions are now smaller and uh, look more compact. Uh, these are the ones that appear by the side. So this is cool, see? So awesome. Then there's title. I think title should appear um, before categories. I don't know, but I think so. So just take your time and do your, your design. The, to me, the design, the actual initial design doesn't really matter. It's something I can always come back at my own private time and finish up but I just want you to get idea of the main things you're working with so reload and we're good we're good we're good we're good so the last thing I want to do in this video is to fill this form so we're gonna have to fill this form and we're going to say founder this form is going to be title how to be a villain like uh, by coding Laravel I don't know if anybody in the world has ever done that I don't think so but uh, maybe you could be the first person to do that subtitle Laravel principles to set set your your finances free okay now um, we're just gonna have to copy description this 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 about instructor the partner is the world's greatest lover developer 
Alright. Okay. Um, copy, paste, 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 paste. Playlist URL. We have to go to. Uh, let me just put this tags PHP Laravel. Okay, tags should be separated by comma. Okay, tags. Where is it? Tags. Okay, tags. So put in brackets. Separ separate with comma. Okay. So makes sense. We can refresh again because we've started filling playlist URL. So go to my YouTube channel and I'll copy my YouTube channel is Brain Temple. Brain Temple Tutorial TV. That's how you get set free. So I'm just gonna go and try and hijack a YouTube URL uh, playlist URL. So this is probably the greatest Laravel tutorial on earth for beginners in case you don't know. So when you get to my channel, if you are still learning Laravel, check this video. I took my time and explained every single concept very, very well. If anybody ever asks you anywhere in the world that they want to learn Laravel, this is the video to recommend them to just give them this link. So I've just copied the playlist link and I have decided to paste it. Here. you go copy your own playlist link remember that the playlist that can only work here is the one that the creator has access to it, it the one that you created on YouTube because when we start working with YouTube API's any playlist that you don't own you will not be able to put the list you may not be able to put the list that is in May all right so photo uh, here we need to convert this to a picture upload um, code which I will try to um, put I will have to remove this and put it in a separate page so that people can upload their picture separately promo video or URL so I'm just gonna choose any random URL da, 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 da. yeah just like this copy that's the promo video URL admin status remember that the admin status is supposed to be hidden so where is it admin status um, admin status and the creator status so admin status should be available only to admins right so i'll put it at the very top anything that will be available only to admin should be at the very top now we're going to block it out so we'll do end if only admin should be able to see it we'll do at if um if so if the current person viewing this thing is has the role ID of an admin the role ID is less than three then show the admin option makes sense so I think what we have to do is to make this admin a drop down so we use the same pattern we used in category to make it at a drop down so before we make it a drop down, we have to know what we did in the courses. Let's say let's go to the courses in the courses in database. Let's just see what type of data is contained in admin status. So courses. We're looking at admin status. View subscriber. Admin status is an integer, okay? An integer could be one or zero. I don't like I don't like that I put this in as an integer, but it's, it's okay, it's okay. We could continue that way. Admin status. Um, admin status is um, here. We copy it. All the category ID, we copy it. Change, change, change. Um, okay. So the first option is one. So I'm just going to say on duplicate. We don't need the for loop. No need for for each loop and off. So off is two. Oops. Uh, off is zero. On is one. So admin status. So we're going to call it admin status. Admin status. 
so the, I hope this makes sense yes perfect sense so we'll copy this out so admin status if you're an admin you will just see a drop down option at the beginning of this place where you can on or off this course now um, when something is selected when for instance in this drop down let's say somebody is selecting entertainment if I refresh this page it will go right back to e-commerce so we need a way to state um, which one is currently selected all right so what we're gonna do is right here we're going to say the, the first option ctrl c ctrl v that's the way to duplicate this line so the first option will be the current admin status so to do that we're going to just say give us the current admin status in which case if it's a an edit page let me show you what happens in the edit page so you understand what i'm trying to do what we're trying to do is very smart and of course like i used to say there are other ways to achieve some of these things but um i have to do it this way so you understand what's going on in the background all right so what we're going to do is to go to the courses sorry app controller courses controller and look at the update look at the creates as you can see it's not doing anything about courses but if we look at the edit you see that the edit first of all pulls all the contents of the course saves it in a variable checks if the course exists if it exists cool but if it doesn't exist it redirects you away with an error but then it passes that content here so in the in this place that we're working we actually have access to course admin status you see we have access to all contents in this course Okay. So now we have to do an if statement instead of writing on since we're using an integer one or zero, we're just gonna do if the admin status is equal to one, just echo one. Echo on. We do else else of and if. Oh, beautiful we're done then we need to do this kind of pull this kind of stunt on the home group now if we do it here that's how you understand what we're trying to do so to start with I'm just gonna do this so so um, we're just going to do category but here we're first of all going to add the course we we'll say course course category I'll show you what we're doing uh, first let me just finish up so what we have is course category and here um, course category name and what we want to do is uh, for this to work, we want to make sure that the first option that is selected when the page is refreshed is the option that was chosen before. So we're going to go to courses and check the category that was selected and retrieve the category details, one of which we want to display here as name. Makes sense, right? So now, but for this to work, we need to establish this relationship in the model. We need to go to course model and tell it that, it's, it, that it is related to the category model. And I think that's the last thing we have to do here. But just to prove to you here, if we refresh the page, it is going to throw an error. Oh, we can't refresh because of all this. I don't want to go all, all the way feeling that again. So we're just going to go to uh, app models. We're looking for course. Now, this is the model for course. We need to tell it that, hey, you're related to the, um, to the category controller so every category uh, many courses can belong to one category you understand so that's many to one so um the first thing we're going to do is uh, the course the course belongs to a category that's what it means so let's uh, paste this i'll try i'll show you quickly where i got it from so a course belongs to a category so i'll do category 
and I'll call it category so this name we call it here is the name we are using right here to refer to it so if we call it anything else we'll use that anything else here so what it will do is every time it pulls courses it will use this name to pull all the contents of whichever whichever table we specify here and the table we specify is in the models category all right so um, I'll explain this better in the next video but let's quickly finish up the filling of this form and um, I think we're somewhere here for those um, and we had um, promo code admin status I put it at one creator status I put it at one and you know what we did at admin status we need to do it at creator status too so we quickly go to creator status here we just copy exactly what is in admin status I would prefer, okay, admin status. We look for creator status, creator, creator status, all right? So directly underneath it, uh, we replace everything that has to do with admin status here. Admin status, admin status, admin status, uh, admin status, admin status. Beautiful. So we've replaced everything now we can copy this out i would like this thing to be at the bottom since it's a setting at the bottom for submission so by default i think by default it should be off all right or on who knows off i'm now confused i think off should be okay so uh, what will students learn? Students will learn blah 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 blah. Target students blah blah blah. blah, blah. Department blah blah blah, blah. Uh, Discount price. So discount price is eighty dollars. Uh, actual price is hundred dollars. Subscriber count. How many subscribers? Um, this will be automatically filled, so we don't need it. Subscriber count. So we're looking for subscriber count. Look at it. Uh, we can never. It has to be automatically filled. And uh, view count has to be automatically filled. I think we've already taken care of that in an earlier code. So what else? That's it. Click save. So it's loading as you can see. Let's see whether everything we did works. So the form didn't submit because what integrity constraint column view count cannot be null. You see, <clears throat> because we made uh, when we were building it, we made sure that. Uh, view count cannot be left empty so I would like to quickly correct that integrity under courses so view count view count default is zero but it has to be nullable nullable all right so we have this it's nullable Oops. subscriber count needs to be null too because I know that one would throw its own error it needs to be nullable, which means we have to go to a database and correct it. If you don't want to run migrations again, once you fix anything in your migration, you have to go to the database and manually fix that. All right. So uh, we're just going to click on courses, courses uh, structure. So on the structure, we're looking for subscriber count and um, subscriber count and um, view count. So we are going to select two of them and click on change. So we can make them nullable. So default, okay, no, we just click no here, no here, save. Now we can go and uh, try to submit our course one more time. Control R to reload reload continue and uh, let's see if it throws another error it says views user id does not have the fourth value of course uh while saving it i thought we fixed that so on course controller where do we do user id oops um auth. i think we did something like that here it doesn't exist okay course so when we are saving 
here we need to do um or not here but when we are updating and when we are creating so we should, I, I want us to start with create show stop here we need to create the user id we did it the other time i thought it, this was where we did it input user underscore id so we can say that it has to be up the currently logged in user role underscore id just get the role id of the currently logged in user not role id sorry id the id of the currently logged in user save it in user id before you finally save uh, this but remember that at the top here we also need to import auth the way we did use flash we do use auth so and this is okay uh, we reload one more time quick submit It has finally worked. So finally, we have our course uh, created here with the discount and price. I know there is a little mistake here, but um, that's okay for this video. Let's continue in the next video.